right, there's something wrong when someone from the bank and Comcast is coming to talk to you about service. <laughs> but hey, I'm here. So anyway, you know, I actually just finished writing a book. It comes out in April, so I might as well give a plug for At Your Service. But it's made me think a lot about different things. Where has service gone? Put Broadway aside. Because if you ask me if we continue down the path that we're at, Broadway will not exist. But let's put that aside for a second. Everyone here is a consumer. How many of you are frustrated when you go to the store and try and return something? You know, how many of you are frustrated when you have to call the cable company? If you work at Comcast, I can give you an email address. Uh, um, no, you know, the fact is, we are growing more and more frustrated at what's going on. And it's really fascinating because it also ties into what's wrong in theater today and a lot of things that have been discussed up until this point. You know, in the customer service world, which is my background, the fact is over the past 20 years, companies have been adding and adding and adding technology to do different things. They've also been outsourcing. They've been you know, creating you know, these environments that it's a process. I always joke when I hear about people talk about scripts and customer service. I hate to tell people in the business, your customer doesn't have the script. They have no clue what you're doing and you can't do it that way. They don't know what they're doing. Now there's a reason for that. And the whole thing, as I was writing this book, I was realizing something more and more. It's not as much about customer service. It's about this simple human connection. We have lost that human connection in business. Seth Godin wrote a book called Lynchpin. And Lynchpin is, Basically, he makes the premise that we're still in the industrialist age. And you know, the people at the top of the companies, the CEOs and whatnot, they're the industrialists. And everybody else, they're the workers, you know? And then he has this new group called linchpins that really rise up to the top. And they, they basically start to tell it like it is. And I read his book, and I agree so much about what he says, although I think it's fairly a new phenomenon, not an ongoing one. So back 20, 30 years ago, we were still free to think our own way. We weren't a process. Companies didn't make us this cog in the wheel. You want to leave, I can put this other person in. We were, we were allowed to make decisions. Today, we've made it a metric environment. Everything is numbers. Everything. You know, I actually refer to it as the Jack Welch here in honor of this, the former CEO of GE. Everything is numbers. In theater, everything is numbers too. Those who've been working in it know very well. It's big business. And as long as we're thinking like big business, we have a problem. And this is why, you know, the internet is changing the world. It is now giving consumers the voice over that big business. And they're taking that voice. I laugh at all these social media experts who will tell you, oh, we're gonna get everybody talking about your brand and do this and they'll sell you everything under the sun. Give me a break. The fact is, if you create that right experience, people do wanna talk about you. Unfortunately, Companies are not creating that right experience. And what they're finding is, online, people are talking about them. Not in a very good way. This is the stage in which we are at. When you start to think about this in theater, you know, Neil Patrick Harris in one of the videos talked about, you know, all these stars coming on Broadway. Nothing against the stars, but let's face facts. They're doing that because they think it's a draw. And in the way the world has been, it has been the draw. Why? Because marketers could tell you, you're going to love this, and you need to go spend this money and go do this. But now let's think about the basics. How do we do things? We do them very differently today. 
you know, today we might go onto Twitter and, you know, tweet to people out there, what do you think of this show? And we'll find out. We might ask our Facebook friends, you know, where, what should I do this weekend? It's becoming a very different world. Now, it is about that artistic aspect. You know, this is the renaissance. So, you know, earlier when she was talking, when, um, you know, Patricia was talking about this renaissance, I agree. I agree we are in this renaissance. And it's a real shift in how we go about doing things. I don't care if you're in social media or not. The fact is, we've been missing this human connection for so darn long. And now, what I see in theater, and I start this off by, you know, Broadway will not exist. And it won't, unless we change. It can't be about big business. It has to be about this artistic expression, this human connection that me, you know, I've been on stage maybe once in my life, and I said, oh shit, in the middle of stage, not intentional, because I went to a Catholic school. I did the lighting and sound work. I, I, they forced me on there. But you know, I'm not one who's per, you know, to perform. But I enjoy being a part of a good show. But let's think about what that experience has been like over the past 20 years. You know, I, it was funny. I was watching Neil Patrick Harris talk about customer service. And like, you know, the fact is, what is it? It's standing in line. It feels just like getting on the train like I do every day for New Jersey Transit at Penn Station. They call your number and everybody goes charging. It's a horrible experience. That's not what theater was like. Theater was an experience. It was something that was special. It has not been as special as it was in recent years, has it? Do you get that feeling when you go to the theater, even if you can get that assigned seat from Ticketmaster? Do you get that feeling when you go in? No, you feel like they're rushing you in and rushing you out. Do you feel a connection to the people on stage? No. You know, theater, you know, when you look at a lot of the big shows, the big money shows, what is it? It's a whole bunch of special effects. And you know, I know people will make the case that special effects are part of this artistic aspect. I, and I get it, but you know what? I get that on TV shows or movies. I prefer the real artisan aspects. I prefer that artistic, that human thinking. And that's where the shows are the best. And where Broadway is missing it is stuff that is today off Broadway. It's not making it here. Now, it's not making it here not because the shows aren't good. It's not making it here because, hey, it's not big budget. It's not going, you know, it's not going to attract the masses. What I will tell you is the problem in companies, in big business, over the past 10 years, 20 years, probably forever, they're too slow to understand what is happening in their world, and they're too slow to change. So looking at the numbers, the numbers look great. The revenue is great. People are coming. So we're just going to keep delivering the same damn thing. The fact is, if that doesn't change, all of a sudden, it's going to go the complete other direction. You can look at companies like AOL. You know, AOL, they created, let's just say, not the greatest experiences in the world. They've linked themselves to dial-up. Today, they're still around, but you know what? They're not the same thing at all. You know, this is a whole different world, and you need to evolve with it, and you need to evolve with it when you are on top. And part of that evolution is thinking differently. The parts to today are about thinking differently. What I see happening is you know, getting to the point where it is that total experience. You know, because, you, you know, the hard part today is you're competing against all kinds of different things that are going on. We have, you know, videos everywhere. We have people connecting everywhere. There's content galore. There's way too much content. And I did like where we were talking about it earlier today where, but there's something special about live. And there is. There's that human connection that is missing in those other things. But let's face an important fact. It's not that very different than some of that other content. So if you continue to deliver using the same formula that exists, no one's going to want to watch it. No one's going to want to spend the hundreds of dollars of going to shows. 
You know, why are people so frustrated with cable companies? One of the reasons they're frustrated is costs keep going up and up and up. Well, guess what? I saw just as bad numbers here from, from a consumer perspective for Broadway. What's gone on over the past 10 years? You don't think that theater goers at some point are going to say enough is enough and I'm not doing it anymore? Because they're going to. So over the next 20 years, I do think there's going to be a renaissance. I actually think it's going to be beautiful. And I do think Broadway will exist. But I think it's going to become a much humaner form. I do think social media does bring interesting things to it. You know, now today in social media, people can Twitter with the actors. They can get to know them from a human perspective. They can link to them on Facebook. Now I'm connected to it. That human connection is extraordinarily important. And by the way, it's one of the reasons why most companies miss out on social media. Actually, I wasn't going to tell you this story, but I'm going to tell it to you really quick because it hits this human aspect home. So how many people hate the cable company? <laughs> doesn't matter who your cable company is. Doesn't, you know. Yeah, I get it. So when I started on Twitter years ago, what happened was you know, we were helping people out as they needed it. In the first few months, I was the only one doing it. And you know how all these companies are on Twitter and follow our company at? Yeah, because so many people really want to follow companies. Come on. Um, but I didn't understand that at first. I'm not a marketer. And what happened was we started helping people. And I started helping people. And I was doing it morning, noon, and night. Um, you know, I'd start at 6 in the morning until 2 in the morning. And, you know, this was an amazing thing. But July rolled around. That was in April through July. July rolled around. And I said, hey, guys, tomorrow I have to take the day off. And so I took the day off. At the end of that day, I looked on Twitter. And the most amazing thing was happening. People that did not work for the company were saying, hey, let's let Comcast Cares have his day. Can I help you? They didn't even work for us. Would you do that for your cable company? Now, I'll tell you a little bit more about that day. Those individuals actually searched the internet and found that that day was the anniversary of my daughter's death. Now, it's not the reason I took the day off. I took the day off because my other daughter, it was her second birthday was the day before. It was the only day we could have a party. But they did that not for Comcast. They did that for me. We are missing human connections in everything we're doing. And it's time that we need to bring that back. People crave it. They crave being able to call someone and ask a question. So in 20 years, I do think it is going to be much more about that experience. You will be able to choose where you sit. You'll be sitting with your friends because you're going to be able to connect using social tools such as a Facebook. Not that I think Facebook will exist in 20 years, but that's a whole other speech. <laughs> but you know, the fact is, you're going to be able to connect and understand this and know where you're sitting. You're going to connect to these actors and the people behind the scenes that are doing this amazing work. And that marketing budget, it's not going to be that big because now you're going to have these people that are going to drive this conversation. Because one of the funny things is, and a lot of, you know, we heard it at the beginning of today, oh, please keep your phones up, blah, 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 blah. Another big change that I think is going to happen is you're going to see the audience being encouraged to not only have their phones on and, and talking about it, but I'll actually take it a step further. You're going to be encouraging them to be a part of the whole experience because guess what? It's a two-way thing that's going on. You know, we're building that human connection out there, getting to know that artistic aspects. You're also getting the other side to that. You're getting you know, the artists that are on stage also getting to know their audience in a unique way. This is becoming a whole new experience. So I think you're going to have those things going on. And it's going to really put a, a swirl in ex everything we do. And you're going to see unnamed people shooting up to be stars. Not because of movies, because truthfully, I don't see that anymore. I think at some point you're going to have a frustration at the amount of move money some of these artists make. You know, and they're going to say, enough's enough. But you're going to see these other people, these you know, the people like myself, a guy named Frank and customer service, all of a sudden now gets to be on stage talking about his beefs with customer service. You know, we now have that weird ability to have that happen. And that is really what's going to start driving the performance of theater. And that's where the fun is going to happen. 
you know, beyond that, you're, you're going to have a different involvement, you know, a different process as you go about, you know, doing things. I remember when I got to see Rent uh, for the first time, and Rent it, to me is just a fabulous show. It's one of the, you know, the best shows over the past 20 years. And it was fascinating. The stage was much tighter than you sometimes see. And people were right on that stage. And it was this very artistic cast that was really presenting things. And by the way, I saw it before you know, these stars were a part of it. And it was extraordinarily special. I remember that. I remember going to the theater when I was a kid, and you know, what did you do? You got dressed up. This was an experience, you know. And you'd be taken in, and you know, you oh, this is how you act. It was all prim and proper. It's some stuff I look back and laugh at today, but it was this experience. Now go to the go to the show. What is it? Oh, gotta go to the show. Let's go throw on some clothes and let's you know let's go pile in. And you know, I took the kids actually recently to. Um, See Mary Poppins. Uh, Mary Poppins is just a, a great show. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old, so it's perfect for them to see. So I brought them in. And what did I see? I saw, okay, you're rushed in, you're rushed out. I saw employees throughout who really didn't care about anybody there. You know, the one guy, don't go down these steps, go over there. Okay, thank you. You got it. You know, this interactions with everybody within the theater was not a great experience. Now, do my girls love it? Absolutely. You know, our three-year-old still talking about Mary Poppins and things she did. But from the experiences I remember, it was nothing like it. It was just like going to the movie theater. It was not that different. And that is the hard part when I look at this. And this is why I get so frustrated by those customer experiences that, that exist today. And I think part, partially to blame, and this is one of the things I'm starting to really you know, wonder, is it's the consumer's own fault in many ways. We said this is acceptable. You know, and now we're sitting there going, huh, no, it's not. <laughs> this isn't what I wanted. You know, you're going to charge me this. You need to do these things. So we're starting to fight back. And the next 20 years is exactly that fight playing out. And it's going to be a question of whether Broadway is what exists or artistic houses outside of Broadway. It's going to be one or the other. And you know, if I were a betting person, the way it is today, I'm betting on those artistic houses that are not on Broadway. You know, the people that are really doing it because it's powerful, because they want to do it. You know, that's what's exciting to me. And I think that we can change all that about how Broadway works. And I look forward to it. And I know everyone in this room is going to be a part of that transformation. I want to thank you. I think the speakers today have been great. I want to thank our, you know, the guys who created this event. I think it's a lot of fun. But in the third session today, you need to put on that hat and really start to drive that. But then even beyond that, what I'll also tell you is you have the power to drive the change. You know, you have that power. In business, I always refer to myself as a storyteller. I drive change not from numbers. I drive change from stories. And that's because we've gotten so into numbers, no one's good at them. You can become that storyteller. You can drive that change. I don't care what your position is within your organization or within the theater. So I want to thank you, and I hope you have a great time today.